Hello and welcome to this IBSA series of podcasts on considering countries to where UK residents may wish to emigrate in light of the non-don changes introduced by the Conservatives and the likely tightening of these rules under the new Labour government, including bringing foreign trust assets within inheritance tax, an increasing capital gains tax rate to income tax levels, uh, and particularly those aiming at uh, fund managers. My name is Roy Saunders, founder and chairman of the IBSA, the International Business Structuring Association, which is a multidisciplinary global association of entrepreneurs and their professional advisors dedicated to sharing their expertise with each other within a great networking platform. Our current series of 15 of 15 minute podcasts will review beneficial tax regimes in Italy, Spain, Portugal, Malta, Cyprus, Switzerland, Singapore, and Dubai. Uh, so today I'm joined by Darren Joseph of Moore's Roland Asia Pacific, uh, who's an international tax advisor primarily based in Singapore, um, but who seems to be popping up in lots of other countries as well, uh, and who has worked in international finance all of his adult life. Uh, Darren, uh, we've uh, had a lot of uh, chats together. Uh, could you start perhaps by talking about Singapore's popularity for um, high net worth individuals? Roy, right, thank you very much. Once again, it's an honor and privilege to, to have a, a quick chat with you. Uh, my name is Darren Joseph with HEZ.tax, which is a member of Moore's Rule in Asia Pacific. So we're a team that seeks to demystify the sometimes confusing world of cross-border tax working with private clients all over the world. Now, in terms of the popularity of Singapore, I've been based in Singapore for just over 10 years now. And uh, I think its reputation does, does precede it. However, the vast majority, just looking at the data, the vast majority of immigrants uh, into Singapore are actually from within Asia itself, from within the Asia Pacific region. The population is roughly, for those who aren't familiar with it, there are about 6 million people in Singapore. Roughly 40% are, let's say, uh, international talent, so workers from outside of Singapore on temporary work permits. And, and that includes permanent residents as well, but 60% citizens. So in terms of the, the overall topic that, that you're seeking to explore, Roy, there are only about 50,000 Brits in, in Singapore, so that's quite small by comparison. Now, the, the credit suites, there, there, there's a lot of data out there for those who really want to get into the data. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes a lot of it is advocated by, I guess, uh, private sector organizations, which may or may not have their own agenda. Uh, but, you know, be that as it may, you can question the methodology, but Credit Suisse Research Institute, uh, I, I think they do a, a, a decent job at, at pulling out data. And they do a global wealth report every year. And according to them, there are about 330 odd thousand millionaires in Singapore. Wow. So, and they, and they kind of break that down into, you know, how many are uh, ultra high net worth, I guess, with, uh, I guess, assets in excess of 50 million and those who are just regular high net worth. So, roughly, it's about 6.7, so let's say around 7% of the adult population in Singapore are millionaires. Wow. And, they, and they do expect that that number is going to jump to over 430 odd thousand come 2025. So I mean, what are, putting that in perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what are, what are the benefits to them of uh, coming to Singapore? What, why do uh, high net worth individuals and, and millionaires base themselves? Is it foreign income is exempt from tax? What, what is the income tax levels and so on? So here's here, you know, again, I'm going to swim against the, 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 the tide. And I think that for high net worth individuals, their primary directive is never really taxation. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule, but when we look at the research from like Warwick University, they did a paper recently, London School of Economics, of course, Henley and Partners, and Christabel Young, who I always quote from Cornell University. I think when you look at a hard for peer reviewed research, there is consensus that it is not tax driven despite what influences on social media want us to, what want us to consider. It is, a, it is part of the attractiveness. I'd say as someone who's based in Singapore and in, interacting with other intermediaries, I think it, there, there's a common term that we use in Singapore called soft factors to explain the popularity of Singapore. It's English language is, you know, is, 
this English language. It's also based on English common law as a former uh, UK colony. I don't know if that's a politically correct term, but that's what it is. So there's a level of familiarity with it. It has arguably the most efficient government on earth. When you go through the immigration process, it is uh, incredibly smooth. And of course, safety in an era where being what well, one has to be conscious of, uh, you know, of, of those types of unfortunate issues. And when you put on top of that, when you look at the list, however you want to rank it, of the top banks in the world in terms of, you know, liquidity ratios and, and stability, you're going to see this, the three Singapore indigenous banks in that top 20. I mean, uh, I was looking at Global Finance Magazine earlier. When you look at world-class universities, like if you look at the time higher education ranking, again, you're going to see a Singapore university in the top 20 in the US. So you have uh, the, the, the infrastructure, the soft infrastructure that makes it really attractive. Now, put on top of that, the fact that, yes, it does have, it's not a no-tax jurisdiction, but it is a relatively low-tax jurisdiction. It is territorial tax. Corporate income tax is it headlines at 17%, but, you know, with deductions and et cetera, it could the effective tax rate is, it's not unusual for it to be lower. In terms of personal income tax, it goes all the way up to 24%, I think it is. So again, it's not low tax, uh, but it is attractive. But again, I argue that it, that it is the wider array of soft factors that make Singapore attractive. But you're saying it is territorial. So like most countries which try and attract high net worth individuals, foreign income and gains are exempt from tax. Correct. But then again, when you look at the list of uh, jurisdictions that are successful in uh, attracting high net worth individuals, the majority of them are not territorial. But no. it, it's territorial. But it is territorial to your point. Yes. OK. And and these individuals are resident in Singapore so they can take benefit uh, from Singapore's double tax treaties. Uh, mm -hmm. them. Are there saving clauses within the double tax treaties that say only if the income is taxed in Singapore, could you use double tax treaties to protect foreign income? I think, yeah. I mean, you know, the normal anti-abuse uh, protocols would apply. So you'd need to have decent substance. And even in terms of avoid of avoiding uh, to be to enjoy the benefits of a territorial tax regime, it is helpful, depending on the income, that that income was taxed in the foreign jurisdiction from which it's sourced. So in certain circumstances, if income arises outside of Singapore and it comes into Singapore, having not been taxed outside of Singapore, it could in turn be taxed in Singapore, which doesn't make it a pure play territorial tax jurisdiction. But it also reinforces the point that its popularity is not driven by tax. Yeah, that's interesting. And that is a, 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 a perhaps a cause for concern for people who are trying to get tax free income. Um, uh, but but nevertheless, I take your point about the non tax considerations. What what sort of mechanisms do high net worth individuals have when they come to Singapore? Do they create trusts or, or things like that in advance of coming? Well, because it is not a high tax jurisdiction and because it, it, it generally speaking doesn't tax you in your worldwide income the you know it kind of means that you don't need to spend an inordinate amount of time in pre-immigration tax planning as you would if you're moving to the uk or you know australia for example or mm. scandinavia so i mean there are tools available but there are tools that one tends to adopt once you are in Singapore to modify the your, your international tax structure to optimize it across the various jurisdictions to which you're exposed. So Singapore ceases to be your biggest consideration. It's the other jurisdictions from where your income may arise that you're trying to optimize. I mean, I know that a lot of people used to go to Hong Kong, for example. Uh, mm. Singapore seems to taken over from Hong Kong to a large extent for obvious reasons, I guess. Uh, yeah. Are you finding people coming from, uh, or particularly expats coming from uh, Hong Kong over to Singapore? Yeah, I mean, definitely that, that is somewhat of a cliche. They, you know, the whole influx, not just from Hong Kong, but from Taiwan as well, and from mainland China. However, there is an argument 
that now that Hong Kong has achieved a steady state, that uh, individuals, high net worth individuals, service providers, and some funds are returning to Hong Kong. And the reason why is that if you're really making a China play, arguably you need to be in Hong Kong. Like, you know, not you need to be in Hong Kong. And if the, the rules are what they are, so you just need to play by those rules. So I think as a gateway to China, it's hard to beat Hong Kong. Okay. Okay. Well, I think, mm -hmm. you know, what you've said, uh, which is very interesting, and I will be talking to lots of other uh, advisors mm -hmm. about the beneficial tax regimes in their jurisdictions. Um, I think what you said about the non-tax considerations is probably the most important thing. So you're not really swimming against the tide. I think I agree totally with you. I know I had a, a client uh, that was uh, selling his company and going to Jersey so many years ago now. Uh, and I said to him, you know, what does your wife think about this? And uh, he said, uh, oh, no, she she she's happy. Uh, she's staying in the UK and and uh, staying with the grandchildren. And of course, what happens? They get divorced. He loses far more money than the tax that he would have saved. <laughs> and um, so there are lots of non-tax considerations. And I completely agree with you. Um, well, look, thanks very much for joining me. I only wanted this to be a, a, a really brief mm -hmm. uh, a, a introduction to Singapore, but it, it does sure. sound very interesting. And, and thanks for joining me. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you very much, Roy. We'll see you next time.